Welcome to face, Alejandro. Or could I just call you Alex, buddy? Hey, can you can you hear me now? I have you? Yes. Awesome. Nice, nice to meet you, Alejandro. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Uh, yeah, yes, I used Zoom before uh, a couple of times. Uh, okay, but I didn't have right. to into that button. <laughs> so you're going to probably want to share your screen. You know, it's a yeah. green box. I'll do that. Um, and we can get underway. And while you're doing that, I, sh Alejandro, I'm going to Oh, call I you just, uh, I just realized we have. Hi, Alejandro. You were mm -hmm. at uh, FXCM at some point, right? Yeah, that's right. I, I joined FXCM in 2009. And, uh, yes, and you and you are from process. the you work in the UK if I remember right, correct? Yeah, that's, that's right. So I, yes, I Alex uh, Alex is a very good uh, uh, trader, an, uh, analyst and trader actually. Yes, nice yeah. to have you. And I see so much. I find everybody, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. So I was with FXEM actually from 2009 to 2016, and uh, I used to do various things like also on daily effects, you know. Webinars. Right. Yes. And yeah. I'm, I'm quite amazed. Well, you like, you used to have a soft, cushy life. What do yeah. you have to do now? <laughs> work? <laughs> <laughs> no, I work anyway, a lot. I'm for, kidding you. <laughs> I, I'm I still kidding. work a lot. Actually, I'll take that back. You know, when you get more senior within, especially when like the brokerage industry, you you, you do work slightly less, uh, which is nice. So oh, like end of I was just guessing. <laughs> All right, thank you for the confession. But you know what, Alex, I want to take you back even before those days and cool. uh, tell, you know, not back to, you know, grade school or anything, but yeah. what were your aspirations uh, when you were younger and how did you end up in this? So uh, when I was like uh, 18, 19, actually, when I was 15 already. Uh, I was into music and things like that. Uh, yeah. I was I was born in Sweden, by the way, um, and uh, over there I was with music. So I wanted to get into that, and I wanted to study economics, or sorry, business and music. So I started with that actually at university in my first year. Uh, but then in Sweden, everybody needs to do like uh, uh, this, like a conscript service. Like you need to do like oh. uh, yeah, you okay. need to. So you need to do yeah. like uh, military basic training. Yeah, like Israel, a lot of countries have it. It's, you know, part of uh, your Yeah, we have it in Greece. So anyhow, the story is already interesting to me because you're not a Swedish looking guy, clearly. No, you I'm were, not. <laughs> you, were born, you were born in Sweden and you managed to live a, a country that has these type of girls. I mean, I, I went there for my bachelor party and I almost never returned to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. I feel you. No, it's the <laughs> wife to be bought him the ticket to go there and she was hoping he wouldn't come back. <laughs> Okay, he won't. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't talk about that. Side and and, of the, and story. the fun part is that Swedish girls are so you know are so used to like um, you know tall, blonde, um, like um, you know excellent looking guys, and you know they like exotic. So I'm pretty sure Alejandro would had would would have you know. <laughs> And good luck there. <laughs> no, but it's it's true, you know. It's it's. I know, true. I know. <laughs> like I, you know, when I go to when I go to because my parents are from Chile, South America, mm -hmm. and uh, you know when I go and visit there when I was younger, you know, I'm married now, I have kids and everything, so obviously off the market. But when I was going back before, like I looked like everybody else, you know. So there was the people giving me no attention <laughs> whatsoever. Only when I start to speak, they say like, "Oh, you you sound like a gringo." I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but then that's it. Uh, no, but yes, it's, 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 it's a different market over there, if we can say so, in Sweden. And I uh, recommend everybody to check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Stockholm clubs, just do it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, so after military conscript, uh, like when I finished that, uh, you, you know, I had like a couple of months at home before going back to university. And my mother said, like, you're not going to just stay at home because I was like 19, 20 at the time. You're not just going to stay home doing nothing for the whole summer. You need to get yourself a job. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, so I just put an advert on. Uh, I saw some an advertising, like, uh, and I didn't know it was like a brokerage. I had really didn't know nothing about uh, the financial industry at that time. And I didn't right. think they were going to accept my application for that sales role. Uh, but they did. Uh, and uh, there was a guy there, like the owner of the company. He used to work for Man Financial uh, okay. in London. 
and he set up his own brokerage in, uh, in, in Sweden, in Gothenburg. So every morning we had like, um, like a market update, but we're talking about, you know, what's happening in the market, what's uh-huh. happening with non-farm payrolls. And this is in 2005, so 15 years ago. Okay. And uh, from there, I uh, started to sort of connect, uh, you know, news um, with price action. Right. And uh, when I left uh, that company one year later in 2006 to return to university, I, I changed and started to uh, study economics. So I continued studying economics and business and uh, I completed my three years. And then I went to a Swedish investment bank for a summer internship. Uh, and I was like a fixed income and FX dealer. Huh. So we're dealing with uh, Swedish bonds and uh, Swedish right. Uh, the Norwegian kroner, uh, sorry, right. Swedish kroner, uh, and, and things like that. Uh, but then after that, I went to London, did my master's in economics, and I graduated in 2009. Huh. And it was the middle of the recession. Right. And uh, when I was at the Swedish bank, I actually spoke with a guy from Citibank. And he's like, yeah, yeah, when you come to London, I'm going to give you a job, whatever. Because I was already then trading my own account. And I did some back testing with uh, Pro Real Time. If you remember that software? Uh, no, I, no. My Pro life Real- is my life is my back test. <laughs> okay, yeah. There's a Pro Real Time anyway. It's a charting uh-huh. software. It's like trading view almost. Okay. Uh, so I showed him this uh, way many years ago, 2008, I think it was. But then in 2009, 2000. And, uh, yeah, 2009 when I graduated, you know, every the world was on crisis. Like everything was just, everybody was just getting fired. But I managed to get a a, a job at FXCM, uh, and I oh. did sales for three months. Even though I started economics, I wanted to be an analyst. Uh, but I managed to. My, my manager eventually told me, like, look, your your sales are rubbish, and there's a role like an analyst role to do research uh-huh. in Sweden, Swedish, right. And, and that's how I entered. So I, I finally got what I wanted after three months. And, uh, and then I became an analyst. And this was yeah, in and You had a very fortuitous road compared Sorry? to what a uh, very fortuitous road journey. Okay. Uh, what does that mean, fortuitous? Um, you know, uh, I would say it means uh, fortunate. Oh, fortunate. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, compared to what a lot of people have to do... Uh, uh, browsing the internet for trying to learn trading, et cetera. You know, I mean, you had a, you had a nice route and doors opening for you. Yeah. Anyway, my tagline is don't just count your pips, count your blessings. I've done a thousand of these and, um, you know, a lot of people have a, a much uh, tougher time. Yeah. Uh, finding their way uh, in shark and barracuda infested waters like our I, industry you know I what agree. i mean i agree the thing is this so it's quite interesting like there was one trader at sweatbag markets the investing bank i was working for that desk yeah and he was like super experienced like they started like back in the old days you know uh like like i think they're like 50 60 now uh so they they started very young but the, the thing with him though is that he couldn't articulate exactly how he would trade he would just go on gut feeling so they didn't i didn't really pick up exactly when to buy and sell it was more like right. so, so that was the challenge and then uh, here at uh, fxcm in london i was the only analyst at the time because the daily fx team and all the other analysts were in new york primarily in dallas mm-hmm. so i didn't have the opportunity to actually no one was there to teach me the ropes uh, so who, who influenced you? Was it books or would you just say you're mainly self-taught, Alex? Uh, self-taught. I mean, I read the classics like John Murphy's uh, uh-huh. book many, many years ago. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, is that what happened was that I, I caught up in this whole thing, short-term trading, scalping, day trading. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it also had to do with the fact that I had a relatively small account when I started. And at the time, this is the, before you had micro lots, uh, when you only had the mini lots. Right. Uh, so because I only wanted to risk like one and a half percent of my account per trade, I was forced to have stop loss orders of maybe 35 pip at most. And, and what happened was is that I was getting stopped at all the time. Uh, then what happened, I think when they started to introduce the, the micro lot as well, I started to make more money. So I was putting that into my account. 
uh, I was starting to become more profitable. And then just as a process of trading a lot, I realized that I made the most amount of money when we had some really nice trends on the daily chart. Right. So when we had like nice breakouts on the daily, like, you know, when, when you see all the patterns that can give you some 300 pip or 400 pip, it was in those situations where my short-term strategy would make the most amount of money. But then I realized I don't actually have to trade really short-term. I can trade slightly longer term because it's less stress on me. I yeah. just hold the positions for a few days up to a week or two. So it's less work. Uh, I just need to make sure the entry is right. Do you and walk then, away from uh, your trading platform? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, I have, I work a lot with alerts. Okay. So I just put alerts on and then I get the notification. So I can explain a little bit how things have developed. So I read, uh, you can see my chart, right? Yeah. So uh, obviously, you know, I, I always looking at the daily charts. I, I always had a very good sense of trends in general. And I used to work with just simple breakouts to new daily highs and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but I started to study a bit like what Peter Brandt did um, to sort of, and that helped me to formalize things a little bit more than, than I had in the past. Okay. And uh, at its core, I just focus on six different patterns. I focus on the rectangle, actually three pattern, rectangle, head and shoulders and bullish and bearish descending, well, bullish uh, ascending triangle and descending triangle, bullish okay. and bearish rectangle and bullish and bearish in, uh, head and shoulders. So those six patterns I focus on. And I like to look at something like a six hour chart or a four hour chart. And I would look at patterns there are at least four weeks, uh, sometimes a little bit older, like a month or two. And I, I a feel a little deja vu here. Alex, were you at our trader summit, the last one we did? Uh, no, no. I okay. Think All right. First time featuring Someone today. else that was a real classical technician like you. I can't remember who it was, but I just was getting a little deja vu here. Oh, okay, yeah. So, okay. So uh, I love this stuff. It's clean, um, you know, no indicators and um, using a telescope instead of a microscope you could say so yeah so obviously there's some there's some stuff happening in the background of course like correlations a lot yeah uh so that helps to to make more sense of things yeah and obviously i studied a bit of economics but i noticed in the least a year or two that it doesn't really i don't really pay attention to it at all anymore even though like part of my work means that i have to read up on it like uh -huh. i do some cnbc interviews and stuff and all that and i read up ahead of those interviews just to be able to answer some questions. And of course I have a long-term view on things, uh, but mostly it's, it's sort of technicals. And, and this would be probably the typical example where you have like a big consolidation phase, like a big rectangle to some, some extent, have a low here from June last year, another low here from September last year. And then you have the low from December. You have the high here from November 20th, uh, from November, another high here in December. And then, what we're looking at here is a classic rectangle, like sort of difference between this point and this point is 718 pips. And some of these big patterns just on their own, they're sometimes difficult to trade, but if you have like a smaller pattern like this one here, where you have a smaller rectangle, uh, yeah. then that helps a lot. So the smaller rectangle pattern is this one and that gives you that target. So when you have those right. combinations, yeah. It, I tend to generate really good returns. Okay. Now, I'm not as patient like everybody else. Well, not everybody else. I, I think I'm... What do you mean? Uh, of sitting to a target? Yeah, I wouldn't actually push. So in the past, what I've done is that I would try to keep the position for, for example, like this, like 718 pips. But I many times I found myself, you know, I have a very decent profit and then it goes back and I get stopped out at entry or for a small loss. And mentally, that's a bit training, you know, if you do that all the time. So what I'm doing now is I just go... Taking partials? Uh, I actually, yeah, sometimes I do partials, but most of the time I just try to go out uh, relatively quickly. So this one here, I bought this morning and I'm up with like 10 pips so far. And uh, I'm hoping I can get out here. That would be like a reward ratio of uh, 4.3 times. Actually, I'm working with tighter stop. Let me see. No, that's correct. So this is the low from yesterday evening. Uh, so uh, around the New York close. Yeah. And I bought here uh, on the breakout and okay. this early morning. 
And obviously, if I would get all of this, it would be a 4.3 uh, risk reward ratio. Am I going to keep it all the way up to that point? I'm not really sure. Maybe I'll just keep When do you point. trail your stop to uh, 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 pull it up? Like if you had another 40 pips or so, maybe uh, bring it up to BE. You ever use BE stops? No. Or, because... or market stops only? No, I don't. I don't use any like sort of break even stops because what happens is many times because we enter like in the middle of the move. Yeah. Uh, the price is just going to come back and touch that level. Right. I could, of course, if I wanted to, I could probably put the stop loss below the low here okay. from this session. Right. Uh, but, but you want to give it more tolerance. Exactly. I don't really worry too Let much. Let them breathe. Exactly. Give it some wiggle room. So usually I would give it a few days to the upside and then, you know, maybe get stuck here for a day or two. And then I start to reduce things. Now, this is quite interesting. So a lot of people focus on the initial reward ratio, you know, the one you look at here, which is that you can get like a, a 4.5, uh, 4.6 reward ratio. However, I noticed like this, if you're good at projecting the trend, what happens automatically is, is that you're going to be able to reduce your stop loss. So most of the time, I'd be able to reduce the stop loss with up to 40% of my initial risk. So if I'm risking 100 pip, I can usually yeah. reduce it. So I'm just risking 60 pip. Okay. So what happens automatically, I can reduce the stop loss a bit. And then suddenly, if I would keep it towards target, I would get an 8.32. But as I mentioned yeah. before, I'm probably not going to keep it to target. Maybe I'm going to get out at 77. Or even if I get out at 76.50, somewhere here, I get that 4.87 times reward ratio. Yeah. So what's quite interesting is after the fact, you know, what's the effective average loss versus the effective or the typical average win after you trade it, you know, 30, 40, 50 times. And that... Uh, that is really what's interesting is the after the fact initial reward ratio. That means that sometimes one can take positions where the risk reward ratio is not necessarily optimal, at least not initially, even though it's good to have a good risk reward ratio that is good from the very beginning. Okay. So, so I this, noticed, yeah. no, go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, please. Alex. No, please. No. Um, well, I noticed uh, I went to your uh, Londinium. FX. dot com website yeah yeah yeah, yeah and, and it, it looks like you um you manage a fund uh, am i interpreting it correctly um i i, I do help uh no i don't manage a fund no, okay no okay. uh I is that a trading education site or because i know you're featuring some type of account on there yeah so that's so manage I can, account I, I can load that uh so it's not it's, it's just uh, what if, if I would have started with $10,000 uh, when I started trading with my personal account? Uh, okay. So, you, so in, in 2014. Okay. So what's kind of interesting is, well, this actually, I wasn't profitable until 2014. So in 2014, I started trading and then uh, I effectively in collecting all my trading results because I used pretty much the same account. Yeah. That in combination with a crypto account that I have. And then right. this would be the results if I would have started with 10,000. I actually had more than 10,000 at the time, but I've been moving money in and out of the account because I bought a flat in London where I live in uh, 2018. Uh, but this gives an indication sort of what one could have expect uh, to some extent. So what I do here is that I, it's educational in a way that I share what I trade. And mm -hmm. then it's obviously up to the readers if they want to use that information or not. And I okay. explain to them, like, this is the pattern. This is why I'm trading it. This is why I put my stop loss here. This is why I'm risking like one and a half percent of my account or one percent or two percent. Uh, so, so that is what I do here. I also manage this website. I created this one, which is called investingcube.com, which I'm not the owner. I'm just the... Uh, I just set it up for them and manage it. And this is like a news website. And here I'm leveraging my experience from daily effects. Uh, and I also used to manage another website. So this is, we get like a quarter of a million people visiting this website every month. Uh, wow. How yeah. long ago did you uh, start that? 
Uh, so uh, we got it included on Google News uh, on September 2019. So, uh, yeah, we, we're doing really good here, uh, numbers-wise. Uh, wow. And we want to beat, we, obviously, we're not going to beat FX Street anytime soon. But I do think we could hopefully beat them. I mean, I know the guys over there, so... <laughs> Yeah. I met them many times. So yeah, we want to yeah. beat them. We want to beat everybody uh, on the news, okay. on the news side of things. Right. Uh, uh -huh. It's news. This is not like trade ideas. It's, this is just news, you know? Uh, so I do this as well. And I also represent the broker ATF. I'm, you know what? I I'm already dialing Francesc right now. He's yeah. been, <laughs> he, he has been listening to this whole conversation. Buddy. <laughs> He's All not right, going to so, take it seriously, though, because I think he—he, he, huh? <laughs> I'm I'm at a quarter of a million, and yeah. Francesca, I think he's like at—I uh, think he had twenty-one and a half million users last month, not last wow. year, yeah. According to a post he did on um, on LinkedIn, yeah. maybe he'll buy me yeah. one day. He'll buy the company one day. <laughs> there you go. You have a lot of plans. Yeah, the Alex is a man with many plans, a Renaissance man. <laughs> so you trade and you develop websites and uh, your demeanor is uh, calming, um, yeah. you know, just having a conversation yeah. with you, Alex. So um, uh, is that the best? Uh, do you want to talk about anything else in the markets? Because, you know, yeah. we are pretty close to wrapping and, yeah. you know, I've done many of these and I could tell, I, I can tell who's a pro. Cool. <laughs> I talk Thanks. to them and, and, yeah. you know, uh, we've joked around a little bit, but you know, I already respect you Thank you. and uh, you're now my trading warrior brother, like it or not, you can't get out of it. It's like being in the mafia. <laughs> awesome. Right? Thank you so much. <laughs> so so yeah. Alex, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I hope you have a great year. Yeah. Um, and perhaps we, you know, in the spring we could do this again and, uh, see what kind of things you're looking at now. Good hunting on the pound cad trade, buddy. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, when you ever come to London or so, I just hook, uh, send me a message. We'll grab something okay. to eat or a drink. All right. Everyone, thank Alejandro. Okay, and you could find him uh, at Alex100. Is there uh, an underscore in that? Uh, no, so it's... No? Alex FX 00. Alex, exactly. Alex FX yeah. 00. zero. Yeah, so and you could uh, go to his web website. It's l o n d i n i u m f x dot com, Londinium f x dot com. Exactly. Thank you, thank you, my trading warrior brother. Cheers! Thanks good so luck. much for having me. Talk soon. Yeah, good luck with the Fed today. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a wrap, <laughs> everyone. I'm, I'm hoping it's not going to impact, but obviously it will impact a bit. They, but, yeah. The plunge protection team has to hold the S&Ps over 3,800, don't you think? We'll see if they could, uh, you know, step in while Paul is uh, begging the U.S. Congress to pass a uh, $1.9 trillion st uh, re rescue bill. Yeah. So interesting, you know, to watch the theater, isn't it? Yeah, it's always interesting that, uh, but I, I I know what you mean. It's always interesting. I, I don't pay too much attention to it anymore, though. I used to pay a lot of attention to it, but not not anymore. Uh, and I don't like to trade those events either because yeah, I always get stopped I, out. But obviously, there's yeah, there's people I, that I don't like trading those. red events. And you know, uh, I'm just looking for this one thing that I wrote uh, that was really comes from. Livermore. Yeah. Um, anyway, I can't find it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he's saying really that, you know, the name of the stocks change and everything else changes, but Wall Street will never change because human nature never changes. I agree with that a hundred percent. You know, like yeah. there, is, there are some really good books. There's another one, um, one of the classics. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, Operation. Operate a stock market operator. Here it is. All right. The pockets change, the suckers change, the stocks change, but Wall Street never changes because human nature never changes. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, partner. Cool. Have All a right, good guys. week, Alex. Really uh, uh, great meeting you. I'm glad our paths crossed. Uh, I'll thank Twitter for cool. that. Cool. All right, yeah, buddy. Cool. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. All right, Cheers. everyone. That's a wrap.
Good luck with the Fed later. You could, you know, um, go to a member chat if you're part of our community. Otherwise, we'll see you all tomorrow. Remember, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. And if you could find one thing to be grateful for, it's hard to be depressed. Uh, I've tried it. You can't be grateful and depressed simultaneously. See you, Monica, Laura. Adios.